Welcome to the Stories of Northern Life from the Sault Ste. Marie Museum. This episode features a historical interview with Will Ross, a former sports manager. Will speaks about the local Sioux Greyhounds and other sports history. An interview with Mr. Will Ross, conducted by Craig Toffley and Jeanette Cowan, July 6, 1990. And the major theme is local history um, sports. Yep. A copy of an interview with Oliver Leto with a Dr. Shepherd. He came here in the uh, 1890s, the exact. I can't remember now. And uh, he set up a practice on Queen Street. He had an old hockey stick hewn out of a tree on one wall of his office and an old pair of skates on the other. And after numerous people, uh, I have, I understood there was a lawyer of Quinn was one of them. Uh, they were interested in it. They wanted to know all about it. And there were so many people that he had come into the office were former graduates of colleges, I presume, showed interest in it, that the doctor formed a team and they played a game in the Sioux. Now, whether that was the first game or not, I do not know. Perhaps the star will have it, or even if they played it in the Sioux, but I'm only giving you Dr. Shepherd's mm -hmm. term, that he, they had formed a, a team and they had played the college and they, be, they defeated Varsity College. He didn't say how much, that was in the write-up. All right, now, uh, getting back to the first arena, I guess you notice that they have a stock certificate? No, that's another gift on my part from somebody else that gave it to me. They have a, got a stock certificate that was sold in 1901 for the first arena and skating rink in the Sioux. Oh, really? The rink um, ran east and west side it was beside Bay Street and on there there were two galleries inside the main seating was on the two ends the two galleries had a single row of benches and from what I understand when there was a big game on I knew the second rink because I had teams in there there were people were hanging over the benches trying to see what was going on underneath and when they built the second that burnt down now the exact date I haven't got it the second rink, uh, it only had the gallery on one side, on the south side. The rest was complete three quarters of a seating capacity, a seating room. And, and the first professional hockey league in the Sioux included the Sioux, Calumet, Pittsburgh, and the Sioux. And this is at the turn of the century. And Lucy Lalonde, an old professional hockey, played for the Sioux at that time. It doesn't say whether they won or not, or how they got to Pittsburgh. I haven't been able to find that out. I didn't try to be honest with you, because there's a lot of field to carry. Uh, in, 19, uh, in 1922, there's another picture somewhere of uh, Morris and Alvin Fisher. Howard, Hessen, and the two, three Hessen boys, I should say, were on that team. Plus, a man by the name of Jimmy Shalou. Um, now, Jimmy Shalou, the interesting part of that is he has a son here in the suit called Johnny. And if you saw the picture, you won't find Shalou's name on it. Now, whether he should be repeated or not, I don't know. You'd have to speak to Johnny about it. But have you got the shut up now? No, it's time. Shut up. 1924, the Sioux Greyhounds won the Allen Cup. Yeah. We have a picture of that. Uh, George McNamara was the coach. In 1931, three local boys, am I speaking too fast? Oh, no. So three okay. local boys, R.B. Mackey, Bill Hunter, and uh, 
Henrik Lozon. Lozon? Yeah. Were all picked up and they moved to Niagara Falls to play hockey. Uh, Lozo went on to play for Hershey Bears. Look up when you've got it. In 1937, the Sioux Rapids, with Joe Klukey in the, uh, in the lineup, won the Northern Ontario Junior B Championship and played off against Stratford for the Ontario title. It doesn't say whether they won or not. I presume they didn't. In the early 50s, the Sioux Greyhounds won three NOHA Senior A Championships in a row with coach Don Grosso. In 1952, the Sioux Rapids, I was manager of it, oh, you're right. won the Juvenile Championship, all Ontario. So you're the coach? Big pardon? You're the coach? Then. No, I manage Oh, you're the manager? Heck Pozo was coach. The Sioux Thunderbirds competed in the Eastern Professional Hockey League in the early 50s. Sioux Greyhounds dominated the NOHA Junior A League for several years. Doesn't say what year. In minor hockey, Tom Keenan's Pepsis. Tom Keenan, um... He's uh, with the Sioux Daily, he was sports reporter for the Sioux Daily Star. Yeah, yes, he played uh, baseball yes. for uh, you Red Sox. Right. You He's are a right. Yeah. I know his kids. Well, he was uh, he was in charge of the Pepsi's at that time. They went undefeated for three years in the early '60s. What was the name of the team again? The Pep. Pardon? What was the name of the team? Pepsi's Pepsi Cola. Dorn's All Ontario Juvenile Hockey Championship won in the mid '50s. Boys from the Sioux have played, who have played in the National Hockey League include Bill Cucci, Bill Phillips Sesson, Don Grosso, Joe Klukey, Marty Pavlich, Phil Esposito, Matt Rablich, Gene Uriaco, Tony Esposito, Lou Nanny, Wayne Mackey, Chico Mackey, Jim Wiley, or Ivan Baldrup, Jerry Coram. Uh, Boys who have won All-American honors include David Johnson, Harvard, and Lou Nanny, Minnesota, and Bumbacko, Notre Dame. Other boys who have starred in college hockey include Tim Duell, captain, Wisconsin, Mike Zook, top rookie, broke the scoring record with Michigan Tech. Minor achievements would have to include the two Pee Wee teams that have won the Quebec Winter Carnival. Hmm. Now that's what I have other than up to present time. Uh, a lot of those, the pictures were in the hockey, in uh, JJ's. There's another team that I can remember. They were called the Orpheum Theater. That picture came later on. I've forgotten the year, but it's a long time ago because Babe Donnelly was around 16 years of age. And uh, the team was managed by, it'll come to me after you've gone, I know. <laughs> I, hope that is not. <laughs> I hope that is not. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh well, it doesn't matter. Anyway, uh, the thing was, it was part of the build-up of Donnie's career. Isn't that funny? And I know him, I can see him and everything. <laughs> I do it myself a lot. I'm only 86, you know, so <laughs> you, you can't expect too much, I guess. <laughs> However, that's about all I have that will represent hockey. Mm -hmm. Well, can I ask you just some questions about it? As in, um, yeah, I played hockey myself, but uh, as opposed from now uh, to, you know, 1950 or 40s, yeah. how's it changed? Like, for example, uh, the training, like I know now that there's, uh, for the Sioux Greyhounds, they have to do rigorous training, weight training. Was it the same? Did they have to weight train? Well, I'll give you one example where the, uh, the feeling was different. Uh, let's take, um, try to give you an ex get that fellow's name. And I had it all here, all prepared for you in my mind, because I know him so well. He even coached here one time. He went on to play for the New York Rangers. Bun Cook. Ah. 
It was nothing to go down to the old arena on Cowan Street. That's the second one. This one was built mm -hmm. around 1911 or 1912. It burned too, by the way. But. Uh, there was nothing to go down there in the afternoon, and there wouldn't be skating or anything. And you see Bun Cook out there skating all alone. And you see how close he could come to the boards, and he'd fall, and he'd sprawl. Well, you used, we used to think, well, that's Sapali. He hasn't got it, or he's trying to do something. And he was. He was uh, dreaming of getting with his brother in the New York Rangers, and he was learning all the little tricks on the side and making use of the ice. You seldom see that today. Mm -hmm. No one that has that kind of ambition or drive. They figure if they make the Greyhounds or Superstar up for the time they become big, then they wonder why they don't go somewhere. They haven't prepared themselves. That's right. It's like a young fellow going to school. He'll go to school and he'll, well, he's one of the gang. The other fellow, he'll go home and he'll want to read and study. It reminds me that off now. I'm going to tell you a story. Practice. And then they uh, have an opportunity to go over the river to the. Uh, used to be the tannery, had an open air ice rink, and uh, the ferry wasn't running, there wasn't any bridge, and that didn't deter them at all. They walked the ice with their duffel bags over their back. Now those are kids that are striving. It, it's not just a game anymore. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to show, there's the difference. The young lad's just to play. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, you know what I mean now? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. So they have to be divided. Mm -hmm. But they didn't do anything else? Well, I know they practice a lot, but no weight training or... Because oh. I know now they're on stair a lot around the Well, you've got to remember, too, they got an awful lot more hockey. They played seven men to a team. Oh, right, right. So an hour out there would be the same as 15 minutes to the player today. Mm -hmm. And maybe less in a lot of cases. Oh, yeah. So there's an awful difference there. Mm -hmm. They had to save themselves for critical moments. Mm hmm. Hmm. Right. And they also. Hey, <laughs> okay, um. Well, how about. There, there was, wasn't any substitute for a gold ender either. No, that's right. That's it was right. Post 60 minutes. Well, what about. Uh, speaking of goaltenders, um, I've seen a lot of old tapes on old goaltenders, you know, being interviewed. Mm -hmm. And they didn't have masks, the goalie no, masks. No, there was no masks. No. Do you think uh, not wearing a mask really affected the way they played? Like I heard oh, a couple uh, said they duck a couple of times, they got slap shot. Same thing as a forward. With all the harness he's got on today, he feels he's, uh, it's impossible for him to get hurt. Yeah. So they can do a lot more and not worry well, they about They feel it. they can. They can yeah. go <laughs> and knock them over. Yeah. Well, in those days, they had to be careful because... Uh, didn't have the helmets or... Oh, no, there was none of that at all. Nothing. Now, even a youngster uh, in the lower grades should have a helmet on the ice with, with, his, with his adults there. Mm -hmm. At any time, I guess, actually. Yeah. I'm surprised that it isn't uh, part of the rule. I thought it was for... Uh, I think they were know, talking we, about it, but they were, didn't get around there. Because yeah, I remember we, all of us, we had to wear the helmets and wear the cage yeah, on the... Yeah. Case would always change from either the plexi mask mm -hmm. to the yeah, cage. Right. Yeah. Well, you've got all these things to protect them that they didn't mm -hmm. have in those days. What about fighting on the ice? Is there a lot more then or a lot less than now? What, in numbers? Uh, or just fighting, like a lot of fights, yeah, uh, on the ice between oh, teams. Oh, they had them, but uh, now we had a local boy. He went on to play with the Montreal Canadiens, Maroons. Bill Cucci was his name, oh, really? and uh, they kicked him out for being too rough. So mm -hmm. He got a bad name, and down he went. Right. So perhaps they wouldn't put up with it. And of course, coaches were in another spot too. They had to keep their tempers down and all these things because the manpower was shorter out there. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a hot bench, in other words. Yeah. Right. Right. Oh, jeez. It's kind of funny how equipment can just change the way players. That's why, Play, you know, when they decided they send a player out, you get that fellow or you keep him in, in control, then he had to be padded better. Right. Aside from hockey here, what about uh, baseball? Uh, baseball in the uh, days, I didn't play much of it. In fact, it's, in school baseball, I got I was catcher and I got two black eyes and they <laughs> that told me I better quit. I was in the wrong place on the team and yeah, I wasn't that interested in it anyway. But what we did have in those early days was a game, if J.J. gave them to you, was called Nobbies. 
Mm -hmm. Ah, these were two spools, empty spools of thread mm -hmm. with another thong. And they were the thread, they, the, they were spaced apart, of course, so that if the knob, is, the spools landed, the knob could stick up and you had a fork stick. And we used to play right on the street, of course, there wasn't any pavement. Mm -hmm. And we'd hook the stick in and run down the wall. There were more knobbies around uh, the street lights than anything you ever saw. <laughs> and uh, as soon as the rig had come, we'd use uh, coke or coal, mm -hmm. blowing off of trucks for goals. Right. <laughs> and it's just kids' game. Oh, yeah. But right. you'd be amazed how many people stopped in the Water Tower Inn and asked what they were. Just little gimmicks, you know, it's different, see? Right. What's right. that for? <laughs> Well, you hang a, 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 a suit of Cooperalls, you know what I oh, mean, yeah. up in the, in the room now, and a lot of people stop with their mouth on, do they have to wear all that? Yeah. Right. See, so yeah. it's just something to attract people. Right. Another thing is, if they get to somebody with an old snow machine that won't run anymore, hang it from the ceiling, no pair of skis. Mm -hmm. old, you'd be amazed just how that will surprise You've people. You've got oh. an old snow machine, and that does attract people. Like really That's right. Like that. Yeah, and... Uh, old skis I believe. Yeah and I, I told him where there was another pair homemade in the school. Some skis? Eddie, Eddie Potosny. He's in the phone book. They must go back 50 or 60 years ago if they're at eight. Was skiing a big sport then also or? No. It just started eh? As, as a sport like racing and uh, here in the city. Yeah, they were just hit and miss, you know, times right. of the year and everything. That there were no positive uh, ski runs. Right, right. I'll keep this stuff for a few days in case you call a few people want it. Now, have you had anything else? Um, I actually had a lot of questions, like of all the different sports. I'll shut up and you throw the questions and I'll answer the questions. Okay, what about curling? Curling? Yeah. I, never, I didn't do any of it, but I did get the championships. That's why I say, if you were to get a man like Helson for, for soccer, uh, somebody that's now playing or has played uh, curling, they dig that stuff up because they know the old time skier. Now, Dr. Shepard, he, he developed being a, see what I mean? And, and they could give you the information. Right. But uh, not anything to, the, all you're getting now is a lead of where to go, is that mm -hmm. it? I yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that that's the best method is would be to get a representative of each sport mm -hmm. and then ask them that if they would. Now, Manny Helston, I know, has an awful bunch of pictures in soccer. So it's Manny Helston. Helston. Oh, Helston. You know what? Yeah. I started the minor soccer. <laughs> well, you started the minor soccer. Help? No, I, I'm not looking for it. That, well, I would, I would uh, deal with, uh, there's one team who was very good. Uh, Len Monaco couldn't give you any information on it because I didn't hear much of it until after he grew out of high school football and then they started this senior. Uh, there may have been, I'm not saying there wasn't, but I can't remember. How about some of the other game, uh, sports that they have in high school now, like uh, volleyball? Uh, I never, never followed it. No, no it, it was it big at all or no? Because it's starting to pick up now in popularity, but um, I couldn't tell you. I know it was played, but uh, who to steer you to? I can't tell you. Right. Mm -hmm. And basketball, that's very popular now. Was that uh, popular uh, in the Sioux in the 1950s uh, or 40s? I can't remember. Hockey was the big key in softball yeah. in the summer. They were the big right. key. However, I'm not saying they shouldn't be uh, canvassed to try it. Right. But who to give you a name to, I can't. I don't even know. There's one I do know used to play it. Went to school with her. But whether she's even living now, I couldn't tell you. Right. Never see her. Whether they moved away, that's all possible. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and well, since hockey was so big, what about speed skating? Was it no. the comp? No, no, no. no. Uh, what's his name started it, and that was his project, and he's kept at it ever since. Oh, oh yeah. his name now. Um, yeah, you know who I mean. <laughs> I think so. I think so. Yes, yes. You just right up was in the paper here just the other night. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but was it popular at all? 
Like, were many people interested yeah. in that coffee? We, have, we didn't even have a, a noble. That's right. So yeah. if you haven't got a noble, you have the incentive <laughs> of the drive isn't there. Yeah. Track and field, uh, as far as stars, there's Linda Petri, teacher over Sir James Dunn. Uh, Phyllis Lapoy, L-F-O-Y. She was a super. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe Elliott, he's in the Davy home. He's, she's his, his sister-in-law. Joe Elliott? Joe Elliott. In fact, there's a picture in the water tower in of her. <laughs> <laughs> so the water tower in, they seem to have a lot of uh, pictures and a lot of uh, things. Sure, I dug them up. Well, I, I'm just giving you the method of how I got them, that's all. Right. So, uh, and I think you know, they've got they've got a. That's what made me wonder. They'll have to hurry because things disappear and people die and the children move in and they, it doesn't have any value unless there's a direct parent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's gone. Right. Now, I heard there was. Uh, what did they have now? However, I heard this house had something that was very valuable in the line of sports. We felt quite sure that I could get it because we both worked at Abitibi. So I went to see it. Sorry. Why? What happened? Oh, so my daughter was here from Ottawa and she took it as a souvenir. So the yeah. Sioux lost things, you see, by not starting the thing like this 25, 30, 35 years ago. Then as the sport comes along, you, you keep projecting. So you, right. You, you, you can't stop. You've also got to think of the history of it and then come along mm -hmm. from there. And that's where we broke away in the Hockey Hall of Fame. When we first started, it was 13 candidates. Um, so 13 candidates. No, oh, it must have been 10. However, uh, half were before Memorial Gardens were built and half afterwards. Mm -hmm. So you were bringing up the history all the time and you were not overlooking the present. You were keeping both that. Then they decided that it was too hard digging up the past, so maybe they thought that's too far back. They dropped it. Another good outlet is Russ Ramsey. He's got a lot of pictures. Right. Mm -hmm. 